Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. I wasn't expecting our text messages to be revealed publicly. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the promise later. Um, overall, I think it was a great movie in terms of uh, the genocide being shown to, to on the white screen to the public. However, I just like Chris said, I didn't believe that it portrayed 100 percent the true image of Armenian women. Um, History does nothing, it possesses no enormous wealth, it fights no battles. It is rather men, the real living men, who does everything, possesses, fights. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and our very honorary guests, um, it is a great pleasure to be here and talk to you about the history of my people, a subject very touchy to me. I could even get emotional, but I'm going to work on that. Um, Armenian history. Sometimes when we think of history, we think of timelines, right? But the real history that occurs in front of our own eyes every day is way deeper than any historical timeline presented to us in history books or on the History Channel. Unlike many introductions of the Armenian Genocide that you had been given, I'm not going to stand here and give you dates and occurrences. Rather, with your authorization, I'm going to steal you for the next 10, 15 minutes and virtually transfer you to Western Armenia in the years of 1915 to 1918. Actually, let me rephrase that. 1914 to 1918. Don't worry. I will not be charging you for this trip. It is a free trip and an educational one. We're in a war zone right now. It is year 1914. We're in a very corrupted country in Turkey. Our American rights cannot be used and it has no validity in reality. Therefore, find a safe spot but most importantly, open your hearts and your ears to this horrific event that happened in the first, in the beginning of the 20th century to my people. It is 1914, World War I just broke out, and Turkey partnered with Central Asia, with Central Powers like Germany and Austria. The outbreak of war provided the Turkish government with, government with the perfect opportunity to take care of the Armenian question. Some of you perhaps wonder now what this Armenian question is about, since the whole world is at war. But let me tell you. Armenians were a threat to Turks for a very long time. Since 1914, way before that in, in reality, since 1800s, Turks had this vision of expanding their borders in Central Asia and creating this land called Turan, which was to be a great Turkish empire with one language and one religion. Let me emphasize on that one religion part because Armenians were the majority of the Christian Armenians in Eastern, Western Armenia, currently Eastern Turkey, and they were a big threat to them. Christian Armenians were totaling about 2 million people in that area at the time, making up more or less the 10% of the Turkish overall population. Along with this newfound Turanism, there was a dramatic rise in Islamic fundamentalist agitation throughout Turkey. Christian Armenians were once again branded as Yahoos, as infidels, non-believers of Islam. There was also huge cultural differences between Armenians and Turks. The Armenians had always been one of the most educated and one of the most successful people in the Turkish Empire. Armenians were the professionals in society, such as the doctors, the lawyers, the businessmen, the bankers, or even the regular skilled craftsmen. They were more open to new scientific, political, and social ideas from the West than Turks were, obviously. 
Children of wealthy Armenians were sent to Geneva, Venice, Paris, London, and even to America to obtain higher educations and higher degrees. While by contrast, the majority of Turks were, were illiterate peasant farmers. Since World War I broke out, young Turks had a dream, as I said, to expand their borders, and their dream opportunity to make this into a reality was right there in front of their eyes. With war at hand, their plans of mass killings of Armenians to build their Turan would not seem too out of the ordinary. Young, Tur young Turks started forcefully disarming the entire Armenian population with severe penalties to those who failed to turn in their weapons. By doing so, they took away the tiny little right that every man of the family had in order to protect their family in times of need. They had decided to massacre the entire Armenian population. During this exact same time, about 40,000 Armenian men were serving in the Turkish army. In the fall and winter of 1914, all of their weapons were confiscated, and they were put into slave labor battalions building roads or were used as human pack animals. And if you watch the movie Promise, that was a very good visual for this portion. Under the brutal work conditions, they suffered a very high death rate. Those who survived would soon be, be shot to death, crucified, beheaded. For the time they had for the time had come to move against the Armenians. In the evening of April 24, 1915, exactly 102 years ago, several hundred Armenian intellectuals, such as the clergy, writers, doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, were taken out of their homes in Constantinople, current day Istanbul, and jail, jailed and tortured, hung, crucified. Next, there was mass arrest of Armenian men throughout the country by the Dardanists, the police agents. The men were tied together with ropes in small groups, then taken to the outskirts of their own town and shot dead. Local t Turks and Kurds, armed with knives and sticks, often joined in on the killings. As if this was not enough, it was time for the poor children, the women, and the elderly. <coughs> On a very short notice, they were ordered to pack a few of their belongings and leave their home under the pretext that they were being relocated to a non-military zone. They were actually being taken on death marches, heading south towards the Syrian desert. Turkish soldiers violated our women. They violated the girls under, ten, under age of 10. And as a consequ consequence, many of these little girls were not able to continue the walk, and they were shot right there. Most of the homes and villages left behind by the Armenians were quickly occupied by Muslim Turks who assumed instant ownership of everything. In many cases, young children were spared from deportation by local Turks who took them from their families. The children who forced the children were forced into denouncing Christianity and becoming Muslims, and were then given new Turkish names. For Armenian boys, the forced conversion meant they each had to endure painful circumcision as required by the Islamic customs. Individual caravans consisting of thousands of deported Armenians were escorted by Turkish gendarmes, their police authorities. These guards allowed roving government units of hardened criminals known as the Special Organization to attack the defenseless people, killing anyone they pleased, however they pleased. They also encouraged Kurdish bandits, bandits to raid the caravans and steal anything they wanted. In addition, an extraordinary amount of sexual abuse and rape of girls of young women occurred during the hands of this Special Organization of Kurdish bandits. Most of the attractive young females were kidnapped for the life of involuntary servitude. Food supplies little by little run out, and my people were denied for their food. 
Anyone stopping to rest or lagging behind the caravans was mercilessly beaten until they rejoined the march. If they couldn't continue, they were shot, beheaded, crucified, you name it. A common practice was to force all of the people in the caravan to remove every stitch of clothing and resume them to march in the, in the nude under, these, under the scorching sun. An estimated 75% of the Armenians on these marches perished, especially children, women, and elderly. Those who survived the ordeal were herded into the desert without a drop of water. Others were, were killed by being thrown off cliffs, burned alive, or drowned in rivers. Turk tries, Turks tried to bury us, but they did not know we were Sikhs. Our only revenge today is to survive. And we have survived. Better yet, we have thrived. What do you think? How do you think these people survived? I truly believe that it was their faith in Christ and a vision for a better tomorrow. <clears throat> Under these severe conditions, a small group of my ancestors managed to acquire weapons and they fought back, finally repelling the Turkish invasion at the Battle of Sadarabad, thus saving the remaining population for total extermination with no help from, uh, from the outside world. Following that victory, Armenian leaders declared the establishment, the establishment of the Independent Republic of Armenia. World War I ended in November of 1918 with a defeat for Germany and the Central Powers, including Turkey. Shortly before the war had ended, the young Turks, Pasha, Enver Pasha, and Jamal Pasha abruptly resigned their governmental posts and fled to Germany where they had been offered asylum. Talat, Enver, and Jamal were assassinated by Armenian soldiers. In reality, by Armenian activists, I'm sorry. After the mass murder of one and a half million Armenians over the few years following World War I, at the end of this nightmare, no uh, allied power came to aid the Armenian Republic, so it collapsed. Only a tiny portion of the easternmost area of historic Armenia survived by becoming part of the Soviet Union. After the six successful obliteration of the people of historic Armenia, the Turks demolished any remnants of Armenian cultural heritage, including priceless masterpieces of ancient architecture, old libraries, churches, and archives. The Turks even leveled entire cities such as the once thriving Karper, Van, and the ancient capital at Ani to remove all traces of the 3,000-year-old civilization. This is the sad history of my people. Thank you all for being here and opening your hearts and your ears to this barbaric event. I'm going to leave you with a few words from William Sarayam, which I'm sure most of you have heard. It goes like this. I should like to see any power of the world destroy this race, this small tribe of unimportant people, whose wars have been fought and lost, whose structures have crumbled, literature is unread, music is unheard, and prayers are no longer answered. Go ahead, destroy Armenia. See if you can do it. Send them into the desert without water or bread. Burn their homes and churches. Then see if they will not laugh, sing, and pray again. For when two of them meet anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new Armenia.